So then guys, the new M5 chip is here, but I think it's actually a bigger deal than we initially thought. And today I wanna to share some potential benchmarks we are gonna get with the M5 chip. Now, after I made my videos for you guys yesterday, I went on to Apple's newsroom and started reading more about the MacBook Pro, the iPad Pro, the Vision Pro, and the M5 chip. And what I noticed was some certain statements that Apple was saying. Look at some here. They were saying that the CPU can get up to 15% faster multi-threaded performance over M4. Also, we've got 153 gigabits of memory bandwidth now for the unified memory. They also made claims right here that the GPU is even faster and in fact can give you up to 45% higher speeds in graphical performance than the M4. And look at this one right here. They've even said the SSD is upgraded too. That it's actually two times faster than what we got with the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the M4 version. And then even this one right here will even claims that we can get 3.2 higher frame rates than what we got with the M1 MacBook Pro and even one 0.6 times faster than what we got with the 14 inch MacBook Pro with an M4. So with this information in mind, I got to work working with an LLM and basically using some stuff with AI and Apple's claims and also previous jumps and enhancements and how op Apple operate using their new three nanometer process, TSMC ones, the third generation, working with all of this, I've worked out estimates of benchmarks of what we could potentially be getting with the M5. And I'm gonna say this, they are quite amazing. And let's get started then, first of all, with what Apple was saying here, that we could get up to two times faster storage speeds. Have a look at this graph that I've made right here. If Apple are correct here, look at the difference of M5 compared to M4. It is literally, like I said, double. And it is crazy when you see this. Now, just in case you want to know that M2 is correct. Remember when the M2 came out? Well, we actually had one NAND chip, you know, stuck on the logic board and that. And it was a bit of a bummer, so it was a bit slower there. So that's why that is a bit lower there on the sort of standard base storage that we got with the MacBook Pro, that 13 inch one with the touch bar. But the point is, look at the rest of the generational kind of jumps that we got right here. It is crazy. If Apple's claim is correct, it's, you know, up to double the amount this is the kind of speeds that we could be getting here. We could be getting a 6,000 megabits per second read speed or 5,900 in write. That is crazy. And what's even more crazy is you compare it to say the likes of say M4 Pro and M3 Pro, for example, because obviously those MacBook Pros even have even faster storage there. Have a look right here. We can see that the M5 is just behind the likes of the M4 Pro, and yet it's out beating or outpacing the M3 Pro. This is crazy to actually see this. And yeah, the M4 Pro is faster, but it's close. It's very close behind it. This is great news to hear that Apple are doing this. But it's not just storage, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's also other areas. Think about, say, Geekbench scores, for example. Now, obviously, we did see the binned version of a Geekbench score with the M5 iPad Pro, but again, using, you know, some AI LLMs and things like this, I've actually managed to work out, on average, a good guess, I'm gonna say this, or prediction, of what we could actually also be getting with that extra performance score on the CPU with the MacBook Pro, also with cooling as well, because that also does have a factor here. Let's see what we could get here. Well, in single core performance, this one's a bit of a given. We knew that we were gonna get about 4,100, just over that. But let's now flick over to multi-core performance. And you can see the difference right here. Look at this for the M5 unbin. This is the one with the 10 core CPU. We could be getting 17,000 or close to 17,000. Maybe we might just get over that. Maybe we'll just get below this, but you get the idea with that extra core inside of it, it is gonna help out here. But just look at it compared to the M1. We are essentially getting, you know, almost double what we're getting. We are getting really double what we had with the M1 chip in the MacBook Pro just five years ago. That is crazy what we are getting there. 
And what makes it even more crazy is that if you compare this to other older chips like Pro, Max, and even Ultra chip as well, take a look. The M5 chip is really out in front here. Look at this, it's way faster than M3 Pro. It's faster than the M4, obviously, but just have a look, it's beating out the M1 Max. It's close to the M1 Ultra, it's just behind it. I think that the unbinned version of the M6 will overtake the M1 Ultra. What is crazy when you think about it here? But just even in comparison to all of these, it is amazing to see how far the M5 chip has come over these years. And if you're upgrading from M1 or M2, you will notice the difference here if you are using CPU bound kind of apps out there. And even if we did the same thing again, let's say we did this in Cinebench and used an LLM to help us out here. Let's have a look then to see what we've got right here. Well, again, we can see this is super impressive here. You know, we are beating out the M3 Pro, the M4, even the M2 Max. Now the M4 Pro obviously is gonna be ahead here, but still, it is great to see the kind of performance that we are gaining here with M5. Definitely a big bump up again compared to what we had with the M4. But then we've also got other claims from Apple about Xcode, for example, apps. Have a look at what they're saying right here. They are saying that we're getting up to 2.1 times faster compiling in Xcode compared to the 13 inch MacBook Pro and 1.2 faster than the 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is crazy to hear this. And I know what you guys want to see. Let's see what this looks like in a chart. Well, let's say we had on the M1 a 10 minute project to compile. Have a look how long that would take on an M5. It would take probably about 5.3 minutes. Now, I have factored in some few other factors. I know you could say it could probably be a little bit less than that, but obviously I'm thinking if you've got other apps running and things like this, yeah. The point is we're talking about half the amount of time or even possibly more than that potentially. This is crazy what you're gonna be getting. So even if you had an M1 or M2 MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, this is gonna be a big upgrade for you. And it doesn't just stop there either. Apple even talked about Blender, for example. This is what they said about Blender. You can get up to 6.8 times faster 3D rendering in Blender when compared to the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 and 1.7 times faster than the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M4. So again, let's have a look at a chart of this. Well, again, same thing. Let's say with the M1, we had a project and it took 10 minutes to, you know, render here. Have a look at the M5. Wow, 1.3 minutes. That is crazy. What's even more crazy is, have a look at compared to the M4 Pro. It's just slightly slower there. We are faster than the M4, obviously. We are faster than the M3 Pro. And you know, we're even faster than the M2 Max and the M1 Max. This is crazy, the difference that you would see. Even if you owned yourself a likes of an M1 Max and you got yourself the M5, you know, you would see it half the time. That is amazing, the performance difference that we are seeing right here. But then it doesn't stop there. It's also about gaming too. Apple have made claims about gaming. Look at this again, it says this that we can get up to 3.2 higher frame rates in games than compared to the 13 inch MacBook Pro with M1 and even 1.6 times faster than the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M4. So for this then, I've done this on Cyberpunk 2077, the version that's been built for Mac OS. Let's have a look then. We can see how amazing the M5 is. Do remember this is being played at 1080p, medium preset, metal FX quality, no ray tracing on, but have a look, this is amazing. The M5 can give us 78 frames per second compared to the M1 which gave us 28, or the M2 at 31, or even the M4 at 50. That is a massive jump what Apple are gonna be claiming here. Even compared to the M4 Pro, we're just behind it. And even compared to the likes of say, you know, other ones on here, look at this, the M2 Max, we are close to that, that is just, Amazing, I keep saying amazing, amazing, because it is, it's truly amazing what is being provided. M3 Pro, we are way ahead. We are catching up big time, even to the likes of the M3 Max. 
it is great here what you're going to get in frames per second. The M5 chip is definitely a beast of a chip. Now, obviously, what I'm going to say is, again, this has been made on estimates and what Apple have told us. Again, I've used previous older data to work this out and what Apple is saying here using an LLM. So obviously, it might not be completely accurate. Like those frames per second, I said it was 78. It might be 74 or it could be 81. But the point is, it's near that kind of area if what they are saying is true here on their newsroom kind of articles. So this is going to be amazing when it comes out. And on that note, what do you think of the M5? Are you excited for it? Or are you excited even for the next ones, the M5 Pro and the M5 Max and the M5 Ultra? Because I am. Let me know in the comments below. And also on that note too, guys, if you've enjoyed watching the video, please do press the like button. As always, you're in the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.